to see. Been to the bottom mountain, the other class, I thought it'd be helpful for him. Yeah, so maybe, uh, uh, you want to talk about that now, so you want to. So this is what, uh, if you want to have this, 
No, you're for it. This is going to help you. So we're starting in the other classic where our partner has got us in and has our, their toes crossed. So we don't have a foot or a leg in. I don't have one leg. Right? This is where you just touch under the touch. Yeah. So we're starting there. And then, um, so like, what you were working on was like the arm trap. So what was that? Like the Yeah, so we were able to do it. We were able to do some of that up there. But there's different ways, like, you can walk and show you. Yes, that's what I mean. So there's different ways, like Tanner's trying to get us to like walk this in from here. In the other school, they teach swim out and, and come around. But that can be quite strong opportunity for you. So that's good if you get that shoulder locked in different ways so you can do roll. But then there's different ways to start. If you come out over here, when you're here, Start. So Tanner was trying to get us to, instead of running, work on getting at least one foot in okay. here. So now we have some inside foot, both our feet on outside. Okay. Um, and then to shimmy up a bit and try to come in here. And if we're not going to like, so we got the bridge, but we're going to try the bridge roll. But to try to up and get them to the side, right? So we have that. Or to do um, the detail is really working with us. Same once we trap this arm, this pose, bring this leg here, and then um, go for a bridge, and then or shoving them to the side trying to bring them up so then we can figure out how yeah so like the bridge more to get them over then are, you, are you hanging on to that shoulder lock the whole during that whole sequence i would say more need as much control as possible so you got that roll in it
foot battle is he talking about? So, when he touches me under my butt cheeks, I have no way of getting inside. This is again that mid side space I'm talking about. Okay. Inside of the kidney area, from the armpit to the hips, and inside of the skin. Here, whatever I do today will move. Okay. So, what Tanner was trying to say is, I'm going to get my feet inside. Because okay. now I bridge, I have the power to kind of move. But okay. I can still go up and down. I got to go side to side. So once I get my feet in, I win that battle. He's recommending that he's down and blocking his hand. And I didn't like this. I'm going down and let the feet go north. He's heavy. That's a lot of reason. So he goes. But that's, that's why that works. So you can hold on to that. But if you feel that once you do this, it comes up to you put it right here. I like throwing this elbow in the seat because I got inside position and you're going to drive back into my elbow. That's when I'm going to rotate. If I can rotate to my right cool, if not, I get this knee in. And that gives forward pressure to the front of the All I'm trying to get is those knees past his thighs. So eventually I want it. The knee's also going to drive my knees down. So the shoulder crunch, you can go over, you can gable grip. If you got long enough arms, you can butterfly grip. Gordon Ryan does this one, but some other proficient jiu-jitsu guy does this, but it's a hard technique to get. I don't know if you do it a lot. I don't know. Which one? just the shoulder crunch. Just the, the I, I, I was working on it. That so, was one of the things that... So what I like about that shoulder crunch is in the same way when you're trying to fight uh, a high mount, that shoulder crunch gives you an upper body pull to, to keep when you're shimmying up and try and get to that bridge. Got an upper body pull. So rather than just shimmy shimmy in the bottom half, I can get their upper body moved downward also. And there's a there's a risk you don't have this you don't have a crest. I and Brad and I are both doing the same thing as you know if I start going over the shoulder, I want you to walk your knees on my body. Now my arms are slow for the same So the biggest thing that and bring your wrist and elbow across their hips or their belt. Because now the control is I'm not worried about them hand fighting right now. I'm worried about my elbows being tight and easy to die in place. The only thing that's going to get out is his hips and grab them. He's got his feet inside my feet. I'm going to work on this. It's working on my side. I'm trying to get my feet inside. Recognize this out. Um, the shoulder touch is a little bit more. Uh, of a different level because you're not sure when you can start feeling this in the spot. You can call right up on you. Now you're stacking your elbows over your chest line and you can start working with the tactics. Now you can have those. You got past your elbows, which is your last line. We did this so, on Friday. The, the shoulder crunch is something I like for guys that don't go to that high mount. When you give them that little opportunity, you're kind of testing the waters and they don't move up. That's where that shoulder crunch, that's where I really like that shoulder crunch. So, so for the mouth, it keeps it down. Yeah. yeah, well, and it just, it gives me, there's another place for me to, uh, to sweep them from. So if they don't, if I don't have to worry about that high mouth, if I'm not concerned about that, if that's not something they, that's really in their repertoire, then I can throw that up there and now I can do shoulder crunches. There's a couple submissions that I can fight from there. I can go um, like an octopus guard type thing. Do some going on? Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead and try the shoulder crunches. Try to feel where you're tight. Inside foot. See how we'll do tight in the inside foot, man. We'll do flexibility. Should be all right. You can stomp on my heel. So step on this one. Pummel your heel in between. Do you bring? Right. Now bring your heels to your butt. Now you're on the balls of your feet. You're ready to bridge in either direction. Okay. Once you got that, you can do your shoulder crunch. You're going to elbow across the hip. Right now you can give you your shoulder. Surface area that creates tension. So, like this? Yeah. 
Thumbs. And that's the same thing, like, when you get that two, two monkey paws right there. I'd say mine. Mm-hmm. mine. So you want to get that back. And just, just control his arm right now. Just feel how much control you have and how much down pressure you can put across his shoulder. This is where the pressure's coming from. So here's the thing that the table is, don't lose track of yourself. Yeah, yeah, so you that back. See where it comes from. Mm-hmm. If you get the suit great, if not, you get that knee instantly, right? That's your objective. Get them off your hips. Passing your guard, the lower belts will just be like, oh, you got 
you got side control instead of just coming here and like not letting him have side control at any oh, point. Oh, you're talking about the lower guy. Okay. Yeah, about the lower guy. You'll, okay. you'll, you'll hear me say a few times I've had already said, Iron Squirrel. Whenever you see a squirrel, their knees and elbows are aligned. And I'm an Iron Squirrel or a lazy hand. I'm always getting my knees and elbows in line wherever I'm at. Same thing with this. I'm trying to keep him from cross facing me. Keep my flat back. My God, just flat. I got no level of alignment. I'm trying to get to my Iron Squirrel. Keeping this spine line and I'm trying to keep these knees and elbows in So if I go to mount him, he's gonna do his progression. He's already creating space before I'm able to go more on his head. But let's just see how you do Now you're gonna start working either shoulder crunch or my elbow in the skate. Then if I start cutting his head, then you can crunch my shoulder if you want or trap his elbow. Now try to drive up and sweep. Or he's going to do that. And, and I'm going to go slow. You're going to try to get to the elbow hip escape. Now, and you're going to go elbow hip escape or shoulder crunch. Okay. From now, right? Yeah. He wasn't able to push my hips down. Yes, I did. But he was able to get his knee in. So there's not just one path to get. He got his feet inside. And all that pummeling, he had to have his feet inside. If I keep my feet tucked under him, what I'm doing is I'm hugging his, his torso with my, my pelvis and not giving him any space to move. And he's getting me off that balance. I'm facing on one of my knees, having to pose my hand. Now, as a Smash pass, so I'm going to want to underhook and smash and really drive my, my hips into the sternum. That sucks in the bottom. So all I'm going to do is just let you carry my weight. I'm just going to secure myself, wear your pose, get you tired, and then I'm going to make my move. Okay? So watch out, he needs to get his feet inside my feet. The moment he wins that battle, I know I have to adjust. Your sort of legs are hard to get that hook on. So it doesn't mean that he can't do it because now that he's got it, now where's he going to go? Well, so if you were here, I just can't part, it, right? part of me would want to go. Yep. So he's addressing this hand. It isn't, I'm really based here nice and heavy. So he's getting out of my way. He's not getting into my firing position. He's getting out of my reach. So another thing Tanner showed us, I forgot. So if you're like that, but it's like I'm not, maybe you're more. Like that, so it's like doing them like that. If I'm gonna do um, the bridge, I need to bring my nose more underneath his nose. If I'm trying to do it from here, like it's not gonna tend to work out. So we want to be parallel. So then when I do this and I bridge, I go a little more in line. Same with I think the sweep too. The whole. So what he's talking about is the next step that. Scott and I went over is there's a center line down his body, center line down mine. Where my nose is, he can't sweep me that direction. He needs to angle his body that's perpendicular. So if he's here in the mount and all his weight's on this side, I can't sweep him there. So I can move my body, but I haven't changed his hips. So what I want to do is 
redirect him over by also moving my hips. Oh yeah, that part. So yeah, yeah. see my feet. Yeah. If I just move my body here, but as I'm moving his nose over my center line, I'm also moving my hips. Oh, I see that. That's what went over my dad forgot that. It's all good. <laughs> Moving the hips is going to help a lot because it's the hips. We also think it's the hands. It's the hips. So even if I'm striking him, I can't really be that effective as we're doing a street fight. Oh, oh. I'm so focused on throwing blows. I'm not adjusting my hips as, his, as he moves under me. Mm -hmm. And we're just, no, we're not doing strikes. I'm just showing you why it's a thing. As you come out of that, that straight ankle lock is right here. Yeah, yeah, actually, straight ankle lock. Yeah. So now you hear my center line's over here. You want my nose to get over here. what you're doing. Yeah. What he's saying is true. You, you lose yeah. traps in the moment. So, and, but, sorry, and, and what, I'm, what I'm saying is, is after you had gotten the hip out, both of your feet came up. And so you, you're now stuck here because you're in this position. After you had gotten him rolled over, your hips were down I'll and your feet were up. This is why I started recording myself here. Song, so. Very good. I hit here, and then now I'm like, okay, come on, so like, it but it's really hard to do it. His feet down, like, I feel all his, like, way. invisible to just go away. Now it's just my elbow, with this down pressure, my, whereas now it's my feet, my hips, and everything. Okay, okay. So I gotta get traction with the, the balls of my feet. Not my heels, I put the balls. Ball, yeah. Was it a yeah, and I had no idea, man. And as soon as I like, because I know better, like I feel like I know better. But it's like how I try to think of it is like, boom, just like I almost just mind re shrimping. So I'm back to here, and that's how I think of it, just kind of re shrimping. So I keep moving, and my feet never come up. But that's just mine. Um, you want to do some like top bottom now? Go until you escape or you can get a mountain uh bottom either sweep submits or regards. I guess that top person just needs to stay on top. Okay. Mm -hmm. Bring around the Yeah. So you're gonna do work on your top. You get on the back first. You're gonna get on that. Okay. You're gonna try to control it with your feet tucked under his butt cheeks. Okay. Trying to get an underhook, if you get both your arms and your armpits underhook, you just get a wet blanket. You don't need to be strong and heavy, you guys just want to get a wet blanket. Make sure you get that tap and Hey, as soon as I hand it to us, fuck. Yeah, but as soon as that hand goes through, lock, it, lock up that knot. 
Do you want to uh, switch rotation now? Where do you go? One more cycle on that. You saw two people here that's not Yeah, there's a mermaid, but. Yeah. Nice. See the knees. So, is I on top of you? Or you're on top of me. So you have to start with your shoulder. Right? You're out. You know, little. Yeah, you have a little. Have you been on? No. Yeah. yeah, I just wanted to. To stay on top, be like a, a halo jump, or keep, keep your hands out. I'm just gonna push on your chest. Um, tell me how long it takes you to do Quick. Okay, but you know, just relax. But how was I escaping? So I don't want you to work really hard. I want you to steal that blanket. Just if I push, let me push. Okay, now I feel the difference in this. All I do is focus my energy from nothing to really effectively control the control point. Hips. Yeah. Hips. So you can't reach into the hands, giving yourself exposure to that. Which is what I'm worried about introducing the trouble walking into uh, Quickly, but knowing both, knowing that they're both there. Okay. Well, what were you guys working on with your, um, with 
the week, the Wednesday I wasn't here with his escape. Oh, he did, he did a drop it all. It was an autumn heel hook. Half guard, he keeps calling it a heel hook. It's, it's, it's well, not heel, but I know what you mean. We were in that one. We were It was basically trying to get one of the feet under, if I'm not mistaken, under here. Boom. So it wasn't a. There's a couple of different ways to outside that. Was, was that it? I think so. It was like a. Jump. Because I know we taught you a couple of things, but I thought it was a half guard pass where we had you, had you pummel under the heel, under the ankle. Yeah, it was like a. Wait, was it this way? Yeah. It was a lifting. It was a lifting up and then and passing. I think we were using it as the as a full drum. It was like a crowbar. Yeah. It was like a. Yeah, that was a cool that's one. not my move. That's his move and Tanner's move. But he's, he was teaching that outside instead of doing a lockdown. Where is it? Inside one, almost using the outside foot to come on the ankle. Uh, so your laces are going under my ankle. This one was coming over here, so it's coming over my calf. Kind of stomping on my calf. So now, now you're praying for much foot. It's kind of here. And so as he starts doing this, he's forcing this sweep by pinching his knees. And now I'm like elevated over, and he's going to just turn to his left shoulder and sweep. Think of the Scott show. I mean, the way that he did it was like so fluid. It was just like butter. And then I was trying to, I think I'm making, I was a little bit different. I was sorry. Yeah. Because I'll, I'll do a lockdown, which is like, so it was from a half guard. And what I'll do is I'll do the outside foot in and inside goes under his ankle. But so we'll keep you can't do that. And that having this lock control, so this foot's under, elevating and tweaking that knee. So I can start sweeping. That's that's what he was doing, really controlling that hip and knee. So you're not, I'm not getting an underhook. This. I don't do that so much because everybody's hollering at me. Like, and they. Oh, come on, me. buddy. Not everyone. <laughs> well, the girls. No, but what I mean is I have to. Yeah, I'm not sure than you. Come on, yeah. but, but what I'm saying is when I when I do this on a person about my height or someone a little bit taller than me, so go ahead, get the underhook, and drive this. When they flatten me out, I can't roll. So I got to be cognizant of this. So that's why that knee line doesn't work for me. But what I'll do is I'll reverse this. And I'm like, to get here and get this under him. That is great. Yeah. But that's just because that's what I do for my other gym. But I'm trying to learn other movements where now I'm doing the outside to outside. Mm -hmm. This little hook right here. And here's a plug for why I love you get man. Like, say he's a blue belt or a white belt. And I'm a blue belt. And I come in here. And I'm just smashing him like that. I got the underhook. I got this top control. Like, from all... A lot of people just like, oh, he's fucking got me, he's smashing me. But Mike's got jujitsu, so he's able to do, so if you go through that again, I'm like, wait, what the fuck? I thought I was smashing you. I had the best position. Right? And I don't have a good underhook, I don't have that, but he's just, he's a little bit of jujitsu to go from something that would feel like you're getting smashed. To like, okay. It's in my hip rotation. Mm -hmm. So I went from a very bad position where he's got his base on his knees and his elbows. Now I'm taking away this base, his right knee, getting this hand under hook, putting all the weight on that knee. He's got to he's got, float, man. He's got to post up. Yeah. But that gives me an opportunity to suck in, go back. Ooh, now I've got double under hooks, I've got this under hook. I can go this way, and I can try to this one. Or I can rebut. it. So what it's just a reboot. What do you think? I can go to the path. There's, there's like, it's not like it's magical. I took, I learned that my first month, my first three classes, and it didn't really start working for me until three years later. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, and I still do it. I can't stop doing it. <laughs> it's, my, it's my oh shit move. You always, what does it say? Revert to your lowest level of training. You don't go up to like, all of a sudden I'm gonna do black belt moves. I know, you're gonna default to white belt. So Fundamentals. Three, yeah. I wanna, I wanna feel. The lockdown, so it's called a lockdown. Um, and it's just a half better modified half better. So here you're like, he got this under him. So if I'm outside of the he's like, So 
So it's real, you gotta be careful not to hurt someone's knee or give them a piece of this. So I use it to control, but I'm not really trying to, if you do the wrong thing, I'm hurt you. So I don't want to hurt you. In a competition, I don't care about you. <laughs> but with that one, it's, uh, it takes time to practice. Okay. So it's, it's counterintuitive what people always do. I just want to try to climb up the body and go, no, it's my head. All you're doing is walking. So if you feel somebody do this, I want you to shimmy your elbows down towards my fingers. Oh, you mean with the lock right there? Yeah, all you're doing is making the Chinese finger fist. So I want you a little bit lower, go like, oh, I think one of this. And I want you to drop and get this straight out. Boom, and you should be able to get up from there. Okay, but if not, you go back to this one. Because you're so flexible. Once you shimmy down a little bit lower towards my hips, a little bit lower, you might go on my shoulders and shimmy down my body. Right there. Keep this torso down. I want you to bring your heels to your butt. I want you to go in counterclockwise motion, face this down, then your toes are pointing like a dog in it, and sweep it under your butt on this side. On this side, sweep it under this way. To your left. left. To your, so all you're going to do is on your knee, pummel this way. Okay. So now you see where my feet are, they're on the outside. Okay. I'll show you where the left side is. There's no partner. Boom. I'm shaking down. Heel, I can't do my head now. So, okay. Heel to my ass, outside, pummel. Yep. So if he gets that's, that, that's the one I prefer to do. That's, that's how I your knee. But if he gets the outside foot in, crosses the ankles, under my under my ankle. So if I go north, it just locks it in. Okay. And he's got under it. So I gotta get that one across the back. Boom. Yeah. And I got like for me that's locked down trips to something weird in my brain, so we talk about people. That's what I'm sure. So like how I have to remember it. I have like my thumb lock down, I bring outside foot in, place it flat, and then scoop. And that's the thing, otherwise, exactly. I'll, otherwise I'll get brave. And then I'll start doing weird shit my feet. Whatever side you're on, outside foot in first. Outside foot in. Cross your ankles, and then hook under the opponent's ankle. And the power doesn't come from extending the knee straight up, it comes from hamstring curling your heels to your ass and elevating your knees in the air. Now my hips have to react to that. Now my knees up and My knees on the mat. I got a post drive. He gets his other hook, I'm elevating it. He's sweeping where he's coming out. But it's that's also another. nice that because you have it, you can do a lot of, it, it, as they are moving around, and you don't like the direction they're moving with the lockdown, you can pull in and it throws their weight very high. So then they have to start coming back. So you can extend back. And then their weight goes very low, so they have, and so they spend all of their time reacting yeah. to you doing this motion. Mm. Wasting more energy. They're wasting a lot of energy, and they stop thinking. They start reverting back to the lowest level of training, and that's where you start seeing openings. You pull in. Now they're way too far up. That's when you get your, you know, reach around and grab that far ways, come up to your knees. You throw them down. There's literally a whole system that um, not a lot of sports teams do that. I learned it. I just used that to be the first five step seven. There's a lot of different positions. Aggressive offensive positions. I just use it to escape with the air. Or sweep access. So, so he likes wrestling up. I like going for deep tap. He is. I, I love the deep tap. I love getting deep. And it's just deep tap his arm around the way. So, no, no. So that's right. You know. Arm around the waist and then wrestling up. Deep so down. when I get here, I'll come up this way. What Brendan is saying is he'll go here. This is deep half guard. But I use this to sweep. He uses it to start attacking. Mm -hmm. and there's some he videos right now on smaller dudes rolling with bigger dudes that use a really good deep half. Um, brown belt steam. Did you ever see him the but yeah, butterfly and deep half. Kill you with it. Oh yeah. One of the teachers on the Yeah. 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 I'll think of what we can do. I was actually thinking about it, and uh, you know, hand fighting actually would be a good idea. And <laughs> hand fighting on the defense defensive side, I could probably do. Uh, 
you know, defensive back mountain man fight. Is that's not gonna, I'm not gonna lose my hips at all in that. We'll just like totally mobilize you. Yeah, yeah, just absolutely, just because I can throw the, the locks on it in a second, and then I don't have to worry about trying to twist the torque or something. Yeah, and, and literally just sitting here and hand fighting, and that's just. Uh, Before we go, Mr. Sarkis, we're going to get a couple reps of that lock in the field, so we'll sure. see it in Starts posting really hard. I can start spreading his legs out and give him an electric chair across your 
I extend my legs out, I pull his knee towards me, and his groin gets a little, most guys won't tap to this, like you, you won't tap to this, but I'll use this to move up and see. Don't let go of the leg until you get one time. Like I said, there's a whole series of systems to do So what they're saying as far as spraying and getting snap, that's your issue, which you think you're going to have to do, but really I just want you to notice. Because the defense is, when you guys are cross-facing, you're going to have to stop. So, I'm not saying they're wrong, it's not the most effective wrong. It's not the most effective way to do it. Anytime someone says, I'm not saying you're wrong, no, you are absolute, you are, you are, well, because you will, you will frame, because you don't want them to get higher, but you're also kind of like fainting on them because you don't want them to get lower. So if I frame, they're going to actually fight the resistance. Right? They're going in the wrong direction for them to escape. So I showed you the escape, you see they're south. So if I frame on you, what's your natural instinct is to push back and right? do that counterbalance. But knowing that I'm not framing because it's effective, I'm framing because I want that elbow to get down. That's why I'm framing. The frame is fuel, kind of. The frame is set up. So that's why it's not wrong. <laughs> and the other nice thing is, is that as they start going south, if if you can open and close that lockdown, as they go south, they're helping you get to a half butterfly guard. They're, they're helping you exit the half guard position to a more advantageous. You can go to a full butterfly.